Okay, so let's say you have a dog and you don't want them smelling like, well, a dog. Um, I'm just really hoping that you don't think that you have a cat on your hands. If you've ever been a cat owner and then you just graduated a dog owner, um, you're going to learn a few things. So first of all, dogs don't clean themselves and preen themselves. Um, their idea of hygiene is a lot different from yours. So just for instance, um, one of a dog's favorite things to do is to find some, say, poop on the lawn and vigorously rub their back on it. Now, to a dog, that's a cologne. That's a, that's a mwah, potpourri to a dog, all right? Poo on the back. Yummy. All right, now I get, get all the females. This, this is what you're dealing with here, okay? This is not going to be an easy thing to do. Um, and honestly, God help you. If you have a dog with long hair, I, I feel like that's that's an advanced, like, you know, so, you know, with skiing, you have, like, beginner and intermediate and advanced, and it's, like, you know, like, a bunch of black diamonds, like, you know, warning signals, you know, trying to get you off, uh, you know, from ever doing it. I don't think that your first dog should be a long-haired dog. Um, most people don't do it right, and I'm, I'm going to back up real quick, but, um, yeah, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into the weeds with this one, all right, because I was a groomer for a year, and it was one of the most daunting and difficult jobs that I've ever had, and in large part, I'm sorry to say, because of the pet owner. So, like I've said before, disclaimers, you know, I'm not an expert, this is somebody who's talking from experience, and I am not um, advising you to do this be your one-stop shop, you should definitely do your research. Um, this is just stuff that I wish I could have said to customers when I was a groomer. Most of my customers were awesome. My repeat customers I absolutely loved. And once me and the dog got a good rapport, it was it was great. But it's a dangerous gig, and we'll get into that. So let's say that you think that you can do it on your own, all right? So let's get into the basics. A dog needs to have a bath at least once a month. And that seems like less than some people might think, and that seems like more than some people might think. Let's break it down. Why are we doing a month? Well, if you do more than that, so let's say you're giving your dog a bath every week, well, now you're stripping the oils of its skin, and it is going to get stinky every week. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. If, you, if your dog keeps on reeking after a week, um, and you have to bathe them every week, well, you're the, you're the problem. You're the cause. Or it's diet. And we're, I'm going to go back to diet in a lot of my videos, because diet seems to be usually the number one root cause of all issues. But let's say, let's say you've ruled out diet. Well... Now you might have to just find a place to stick the dog for maybe a month or two, let the oils of their skin naturally get back to normal. Something that'll help with that is doing some salmon oil on the uh, food. But a dog should be able to naturally do their own thing. And so if you're bathing them too often, it's gonna be detrimental. Uh, same thing if you don't do it often enough. I mean, now anytime somebody goes to pet your dog, they come back with a black hand and they were like, oh, okay, I'm never doing that again. And they're not gonna tell you because they're too polite. It's just gross. If you ever pet a dog and, they, and you get a black hand afterwards, I mean, come on, what are you doing? Like, what, you know, what are you doing? Um, so bathe them at least once a month. Now, you can do your usual maintenance stuff uh, once a month as well during the bath. So, for instance, um, ear cleaning. Unless you have a dog that's a weird mixed breed that has, like, pinhole ears, like one of my fosters was. She actually had to have regular cleanings more than just every bath time because... Whatever her mix was, the ears were so pinhole that if you didn't clean on a regular basis, she got regular ear infections. And it had nothing to do with her diet or mites. It literally was just regular ear infections because her poor ears just couldn't do the earwax thing naturally. So you can do the ear cleaning when you're doing the uh, bath. But besides that and um, anal expressing, oh yeah. So if you think that you can do as good of a job as a professional groomer, here's a little fun uh, tidbit that you probably weren't aware of. Anally expressing the dog's glands. Um, it's just as fun as it sounds, okay? So most dogs, if they're a good size and they're healthy, they do it naturally on their own. But smaller dogs and older dogs... Um, just don't have quite the muscles back there that they need to. Uh, what an anal gland is, is that uh, you ever wonder why dogs sniff each other's butts or sniff each other's poo? Well, they have glands there that kind of stamp it 
like a fingerprint. So every dog has a different smell to them, and that's where the glands come in. Um, I thought that was fascinating, but it was only fascinating until I became a groomer, and then I had to manually express those myself. <clears throat> so it's something that can be a huge health risk and a huge vet bill if you don't do it, if it's a, if it's a dog that needs it. Um, but you basically, you know, butthole, you get beside it, squeeze it out, it goes shooting, so aim well. It's not pleasant, but this is something that you're going to have to do if you plan on just doing it all by yourself. All right, so I'm warning you ahead of time. I do recommend going to a professional groomer if you don't feel like you're up to the task, but I want you to know that all the things that a groomer does in the background that you're not seeing are important and need to be done if you want to take it on yourself, okay? Now, other things that normally um, go with a groom, te teeth brushing is not usually included in the price, but if you want to throw it in, awesome. That's usually, you know, an extra 10 bucks or so. But teeth brushing should be done more than just the once a month. Um, a lot of people don't realize, but you know, just like our mouths, a dog's mouth needs uh, care and maintenance as well. So I do recommend when you're, uh, when it's a puppy, that you do mess around with its mouth quite a bit without encouraging nibbling. Um, heck, you can even just take a scoop of peanut butter and brush their teeth with peanut butter. I know it doesn't seem, you know, smart or healthy, but what you're doing is preparing them for getting your hands actually in there when it comes time to really teeth brush. So they do have dog toothpaste that tastes like peanut butter. So they might just think this is just another one of your silly things where you're just rubbing peanut butter all over them, but this is the actual cleaning time. Um, a lot of dogs don't like mint. So most toothpastes that are not flavored are mint flavored by nature. So if a dog just hates mint, well, maybe that's part of the reason why you're having. Um, if you have a dog that's a rescue or, you know, is an adult that when you inherit it, yeah, it might not like, you know, you going near the mouth at all. Um, there are some options beyond just to teeth brushing. Um, they do have water additives that you can put in their uh, food dish, uh, water dish. They do have, um, we're keeping it in, um, they do have uh, this gel. That's my favorite. So what, um, there's a um, Tropiclean gel that you can just do like, you know, a pea size, lift up there, do a swipe, and then they naturally brush their teeth themselves. Now that works great, especially if you're doing this early on. So by, um, by general rule of thumb, if the dog has a lot of plaque on their teeth, um, you should do a teeth brushing two to three times a week to try and get it down. Now, if their teeth are white and pristine and they don't have any plaque, then you should be able to get away with just doing one toothbrush or one um, gel swipe a week in order just to maintain and always keep that water additive in. So teeth brushing should be done more than just once a week. Uh, once a month, rather. Sorry. Keeping it in. Um, same thing with nail trimming. Now, some dogs, you're not, all right, you're not going to get the unicorn dog that just trims his own nails himself. They, they do exist, but it's a one in a million, and usually it's a dog that has a lot of other health risks, so don't bother. You're probably going to have to trim this dog's nails, you or a professional, and for some dogs, that once a month thing is not going to cut it. A lot of dogs' quicks grow a lot faster. The quick is basically like how when you have your nail, and you have the white on the top, and then you have the pink on the bottom. Um, the pink part is the quick. So with just like us, with a dog, the pink grows along. You can only cut off the white, otherwise, you know, it hurts. So a lot of dogs' pink grows just as fast as the white. So you have to be real careful with which dog you have. Some of them are gonna need to, some of them can actually just get away with just the once a month nail trim. Some of them are gonna need to have more often and if the dog's quick has grown too long, you might have to do once a week trims in order to dial that quick back. So nail trimming is one of the more important things that you can do for their hygiene. So yeah, if you don't brush their teeth and their teeth rot out of their skull when they're you know older, there's soft foods that they can just gum on, all right? It's not gonna be the end of them. However, with nails, if their nail gets too long and then here's the surface, and then their feet have to start getting into weird figurations because the nail is just too long, well, that's going to mess up their wrists. That's going to mess up their elbow. That's going to mess up their shoulder. That's going to mess up their spine. You can actually have a whole host of back issues just from untrimmed nails. It's very, very important. And a lot of people, it's easy of a thing to neglect because it's something that is the furthest away from you seeing it unless you literally have them up here and you're like playing with their nails or if they jump up on you and then they scratch you. <clears throat> so I can't stress enough how important nail trimming is and I do believe that once I get over the general parts of grooming that I am going to do, 
um, mini-sodes where I get in a deep dive into um, <clears throat> certain grooming techniques, one of them being nail trimming. I could probably do a good 15 minutes, half an hour on just nail trimming alone because it can get that intricate. But I'm just letting you know that this is something that you need to be considering. So you want to do ear cleaning. Now, a dog, you, you're going to learn their body language at some point. Um, head shaking is not indicative of itchy ears. Um, let's say that you just gave them a vigorous rub down and then afterwards they did a head shake. That's them resetting. Like they do head shakes for a lot of reasons, but if they're doing it excessively and always doing that, you know, ear scratching, um, you know, check the color, see if it's, you know, darker red rather than just a light pink. Um, definitely rule out mites because mites need a specialized treatment. You can't just do an ear wash with them, but some dogs just have a dirty ear. Now don't, when you do the ear cleaning, don't go down in there with a Q-tip, all right? You don't want to clean what you can't see. Uh, if you want to get down deep, what you do is you squirt, massage it, and then let them shake it out the excess. And all you can do is a cotton ball around the outside. It's very easy to puncture an eardrum, both with us and also with dogs. But with us, we can feel when we hit resistance. With a dog, they can't really tell you. Some of them won't even whimper. Um, and this, it's going to be the same thing when you do the nail trimming. Again, I'll get into a big you know video about that. But with the nail trimming, it's insane that a lot of times you might quick them, that means, you know, you actually cut the quick and it's going to bleed now. And they won't even make a noise. And then other times you can actually, you know, not even get anywhere close to it. And they go, yipe! So, you know, nail trimming is its own thing. Um, but, so we got, you know, all those things. And I haven't even gotten into the grooming aspect yet. So, you are going to need to brush your dog. I don't care what coat type they have. Now, depending on the coat type, you might need to be able to only do it once a week. Or every day. Now, if you have one of those dogs that has hair-like fur, all right, it's long, it's you know thin. It's not a bad idea <clears throat> to give them a brush every day. Now, if you start early, or if you just got them back from the groomers, and so they have all the tangles out, all you need is just a metal comb, single tooth, and you can get that done in an episode of a show. All right, you can actually feel accomplished while you're watching TV. I'm not proud of it, but I used to roll my own cigarettes. All right. And so whenever I would roll while I was watching TV, I actually felt like I was accomplishing something even though I was just watching it. It's kind of like that feeling when you're doing laundry and you're watching a show. You're like, well, I'm not physically doing anything, but I am actually getting something done because I have the laundry going. It's the same thing. If you can just absentmindedly, once it becomes second nature, just absentmindedly run a comb through that dog. Make sure that you're getting out all the little, you know, tangles that could become mats later on. It's a beautiful thing. And yes, some dog coat types do require daily brushing. Now, the minimum that you should be doing is a week. So you're thinking, hey, wait, I got a pit bull. He has a flat coat, and the, 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 a brush couldn't even get through that. Well, those guys are just as important to do brushing with. Um, and in their case, you don't even use a comb. You use what um, is called like this, this rubber. I, I like the Kong Zoom Groom. Um, you can always try and do a name brand if you'd like, but it's basically just rubber with little pointy things. And so... You just give them a rub, and it's it's quite nice, actually. Like, the dog likes it. It feels like a massage to them. But you're just pulling out all the dead hair very gently without it hurting. Um, although, it can hurt if the air is right. So I had a dog that loved that, that brushing down so much that she would just, you know, turn around and sit down in front of me as if to say, like, hey, are you going to do the brushing now? And eventually she stopped doing that, and I couldn't figure out why until I did it in the dark, and then I realized, oh, okay, I see static static shocks so if it's uh, the right kind of environment for frizzy hair or static electricity um it, it's a good idea to spray them down with like a little aloe vera spray or something um if you do it dry and it's staticky out there the, the rubber can actually cause um some discomfort from the static but that's literally the only way that it can cause discomfort every other time they should be interested in just you know getting a good brush down and that's also a good way of telling like if you do a brushing right if you break out the comb a dog should just go and sit in front of you because it feels good if you're tugging too hard in the tangles well the dog's going to tell you by not going near you if you break out a comb so um regular brushing regardless of the coat type is super super important um it, it's it's just going to save you especially because of the people with the long hair if they have not touch their dog in months and then they bring them to a groomer and then they expect them to still have that beautiful coat, that beautiful cut that they were looking for. And the groomer's like, no, I actually have to shave them down to bare skin because you have so many mats here that 
you know, I'm worried that if I try and tease it out, it's going to, you know, break blood vessels, the dog's going to bleed, and you're going to be like, oh, you cut my dog. And it's like, no, you cut your dog by letting a tangle turn into a, um, you can probably hear my dog off in the background. You know what? It's fine. Whatever. Again, this is all early stuff. Yeah, you can definitely hear her shaking it off and then coming over, looking at me real guilty, like, Dad, how come you're talking to nothing? You could be talking to me. Um, it is what it is when you're a dog owner. I don't want to lock her up every time I do a video, so it's a little unprofessional, but, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes as we go on. But anyway, back to grooming. So, um, let's just say that uh, you've heard you've heard enough, and you want to get a professional groomer. So here's some things you should know before you even get into a grooming uh, salon. You're going to need a rabies vaccination certificate. No, not the metal thing on the collar, all right? That You could put that collar on any dog, all right? And also, usually it only has the year, not even the month. So we need, uh, sorry, the groomer needs documentation. Um, don't just go show up and then expect them to make a call to the um, vet for you. First of all, that's that's a little that's a little rude because most groomers, at least in a corporate setting, are packed so tight with their schedule. They need to make as much money as possible in order to be able to profit because obviously the company wants to make money. You know that bill that you get when you're done a grooming job, uh, and you you know take it to the cash register. It's not like that money goes directly to the groomer. Okay, they're usually making a you know hourly plus a little bit of commission, and they have to do quite a bit of dogs. I mean like that what you just paid that was not what they got. So. Um, tip your groomer is, I guess, what I'm saying here. Uh, when I was a groomer, we didn't even have the option of putting the tip on the credit card, um, so it was just by word of mouth that, oh, you're supposed to, you're supposed to tip. You know, I didn't even realize that. Well, yeah, it's a service. Pretty much any service you should tip, whether it's delivering a pizza, um, you know, to basically any service. And what's funny is that you don't think twice when you tip your barber, but when it comes to the barber, think about how, um. Just cooperative you are with your barber. Think about it. I mean, they'll, they'll do this, and you don't go, hey, why didn't you just shove my head? You're just like, oh, you want me here now? For how long? I don't care if my neck starts to hurt. I will just stay like this forever, if, if need be. And then, oh, now we're up here. Oh, we're over there now? Okay, all right. No, that's fine. I'm not going to complain. And if you want to make small talk, I'm going to answer all these personal questions that you're asking me. Do you think your dog does that? F no. All right. Oh, there's so much. All right. So much to get into as far as if you're going to take your dog to a groomer. The most important thing is just bring the rabies certificate. Yes, a groomer usually will be nice and call, but it's taking out of their day. And a lot of times you come on the weekends when the when the vet isn't even there. All right. Speaking of, if you got your dog's rabies shot in a pet store, make sure that it was an in-house vet and not a vet clinic. Because if you got it done in a vet clinic, that means that that's just an independent mobile vet company that uses the store to give the vaccinations, the store itself does not have the records. Don't call the pet store thinking that you can get the records. You have to call the vet. So if it's a place that has an in-house vet, then yes, you can call, get transferred to them. But otherwise, stop bugging the pet store. Get the actual vet either online or on the line, okay? Sorry. This is, this is just a lot of stuff coming out from all of my uh, years and, you know, answering the phone. No, we don't have... Let me get you their number. Let me get you their website. Um, all right. So, ideally, you've brought the dog with rabies. Ideally, you have brought the dog without any underlying health issues. All right. You need to tell them if they're on medication. You, if they have a seizure on there, I mean, it's just not going to be, it's not going to make anybody happy. You're not going to be happy. The groomer's not going to be happy. The dog's certainly not going to be happy. They, you need to tell them if they have any outlying health risks that might be a problem. And, dude, I, mm, 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 dude, all right. If your dog has a history of biting, I, I swear to God, if, if you don't tell them, I, you are just a garbage person. All right? I don't mind saying it. You're a garbage person. Now, I know there's a thing called, like, uh, choice-based ba cho choice bias or something like that, like where there's a lot of people that are in denial about their dog because they chose the dog, so they think the dog's wonderful, even if they occasionally bites the occasional person. Like, they have this weird mental block about it. I get that that's a thing, but think about it from the dog's point of view. So... 
let's say you have a dog that bites. You don't want the groomer to refuse to groom your dog because the dog's getting disgusting. So you just withhold that information. Well, here's the thing. Now, if the dog does end up biting the groomer, they could get killed. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. It could get killed. Not by the groomer, all right? By the state. Um, if this is the first history of a dog biting, they quarantine for two weeks, and now they're on a probation for the rest of their life. If there's ever a second... Oh, oh by the way, that's if the dog's licensed. If the dog's not licensed, instantly killed. All right? So now if this is the second time the dog is bitten and is licensed, still put down. All right? A dog only has two instances to bite, and that's if they're licensed. And if then, they only have the one shot. So you're actually doing your dog a service and the groomer. I mean, but apparently if you're the kind of person to withhold that, you're not empathetic anyway. But especially for just if you love your dog that much, think about the dog's health. You know, the dog is going to die if you don't tell them. And honestly, if it's a professional groomer, they are good at body language. And they know that some dogs have had a bad experience with some some other groomers. Now, that's the thing. is It's definitely research the crap out of your groomer, all right? I've heard horror stories about independents. Not every independent. Some independents are awesome. But some independent groomers where they don't have the same status quo as a corporate. They don't have the same, you know, rules. And they will manhandle, you know, the dog. The dog might have a bad experience. They might even muzzle the dog. A dog should not be muzzled while they're groomed. If the dog is getting muzzled while they're groomed, that's just making them even more stressed out. And if they ever learn how to throw the muzzle off then they are for sure biting and for sure getting put down, all right? So that's why if a dog, if you think the dog needs muzzling, then just take him to a vet. If you think the dog's too old to stand for more than half an hour at a time, take him to a vet. A vet can do a grooming a lot better than a corporate or professional does because they have the means and they have the standby staff in case something, you know, God forbid, does go wrong. So just consider these things, please. You know, a, a lot of people think about grooming and they think about, oh, you know what? Playing with dogs all day long, that'd be a blast. It's not a blast. You're seeing the dog at its absolute worst. A dog does not like to get bathed. A dog doesn't like to be separated from its family. A dog does not like to get wet. A dog does not like to smell like the shampoos and stuff that we like them to smell like. So the overall experience is just absolutely miserable. Oh, by the way, if you are going to do, that's one thing real quick that I've even seen professional groomers do wrong. A dog's body heat runs a little hotter than ours, and plus, if they are super stressed, their body heat's really high. So you don't want to have what feels like a good shower temperature water to you. So you know what I mean? Like, if you, if you run the faucet and then you're like, oh, okay, that feels like, you know, what I would like to have as a shower. No, 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 dial it back. You want lukewarm water at best, all right? They do not need that warm of water. You're going to overheat them. You're going to cook them is basically what's going to happen. So, um, and that's all the professional groomers out there, too. I, I test, I, I feel your faucets, all right? You know, you, you're, you're running them a little warm. You should do lukewarm at best. I know it seems counterintuitive because they run hot, so you figure, oh, well, then they can get hot. No, 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 it's the opposite. They they actually overheat when they're stressed. So, just just think about that. Um, sorry. <laughs> Again, all my some of my pet peeves are really coming out in this episode. I don't know if you could tell. I only did a year in grooming, but oh my goodness, so I have a lot to say about it. Um... All right, so when you're doing, um, when you're going to the groomers, please, 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 even if it's just for something as short as a nail trim, do not hang out outside of the window to see your dog. I know you think that you're being comforting. I know you do. I know you're like, it's okay. It's okay. Daddy's here. Daddy's right here. It's fine. It, first of all, saying it's fine throughout any part of handing them off to the groomer is, is not is not right. It's not okay. Um, if you say it's okay to a dog, and I'll get into this with the dog training videos, but if you say it's okay to a dog, that means they think that there is something to be stressed about. See, dad's reassuring me. He wouldn't reassure me unless there was something to be scared about. So don't say it's okay to the dog. Hand them off like this is something that you do every single day. And then when it comes time to watching, I know that if you don't trust the groomer, <clears throat> you want to make sure that they're doing a decent job. I get it. The key thing is, is that if you can find a way to see the dog but not be seen by the dog, then fine. Go ahead, keep an eye out, you know, monitor them if you want to. But if the dog can see you and they're on a grooming table and they're getting their nails trimmed and they're stressed out and they see you, they're going to go, hey, hey, I don't like this. Okay, you're not getting the hint because you're not coming in to save me, so I'm going to act even more stressed out. Whereas if you just left and went shopping for a little bit, most of the time, the dog calms right down, and they're like, well, I guess I'm the leader of the pack now. 
So I got to man up and 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 you know represent. And a lot of times they are the, at their best behavior when they can't see you. So please just keep that in mind. Just don't be right there in full view of the dog. And doing that, you're just making things worse for all parties involved. The groomer, the dog, and now you because you see how stressed the dog and the groomer are and you think it's the groomer's fault when it's yours. Ah, that feels good. That feels good to get out, you know? Like, it, that, that, that is a year of grooming where I'm just seeing the dog getting so stressed. I actually had a dog do what I call an alligator roll because the pet parent was just, like, knocking on the glass trying to say that it's okay, and I was trying to get out of here, you know? Um, now, this isn't a calculated science, dog grooming. So could you be a little, you know... A little understanding if, uh, you know, we quote maybe say, you know, an hour and a half, two hours, and oh gosh, something came up and it came to be two and a half hours, three hours. Look, there's a lot of people that try and just do walk in, you know, hey, can I just do a walk in nail trim or a walk in teeth brush? And, you know, um, I think especially these days when, um, you know, we have to sanitize be between every single dog, I don't think walk ins are usually taken by a lot of uh, places. And especially because, um, we're just coming off of uh, there being a few months where there wasn't any dog grooming services whatsoever. And so now there's an explosion of people requiring, you know, dog grooming. And they're like, help. And, you know, the dog's an absolute mess because in those two, three months that they didn't get grooming, the pet parent didn't do anything. So um, definitely call ahead, even if it's just for something as simple as a nail trim. I, I highly recommend it. Um, I, I can't stress that enough. A lot of uh, groomers are really good about, you know, okay, I got a dog. All right, so they're going to be drying in the kennel at this point, so I can do two nail trims while they're drying, and then I can, you know what I mean? Like, they can break it down to a science, but if you just do a show up, and you get sent away, I mean, now you're pissed, now the groomer's upset that they didn't, you know, weren't able to take care of you, so, um, yeah, honestly, like, it's it's so funny how, you know, a lot of grooming, you know, they're in that fishbowl, and uh, you just assume that that's, like, one of the greatest jobs in the world, and when, in fact, you know, trying to do a breed cut, you know, specific to a breed cut, like a, you know, a schnauzer or a poodle. Poodles have, like, seven different breed cuts. I, I don't know if you realize this, but, um, you know, there's a lot more to it than you'd think. And it's with an uncooperative client. So, please, just be understanding and forgiving. And especially now that you know the thing about the anal glands, you know, be kind and tip them a little bit. They just had to do that. That's a dirty job, all right? I'm surprised that Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs wasn't a dog groomer at one of those episodes. Maybe he was. I didn't watch the entire show. But it was a good show. And if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. He's a good guy. Um, but anyway. So, I think in closing, just make sure that you're not neglecting a dog's health. If you just do a little bit of teeth brushing every once in a while, it's going to keep you from... Every time you have to have a dog's tooth pulled, it's about 100 bucks a pop if you break it down because a lot of times they have to put them under sedation in order to get them taken out. Um, minimum. I, I, who knows when you're watching this? That was probably the biggest understatement of the year. Um, just a little bit of teeth brushing can help prevent having to have teeth removal, which is a huge vet bill. Just a little bit of nail trimming can help a dog from having to have back and hip and leg and you know dysplasia issues later on in life, like, you know, needing all sorts of help like now you got to buy a sling and lift them up into the car every single time no you could have prevented that just from a simple little nail trim um you know the ear infections and you know like ear mites and all that stuff like you know if you just do a little bit of a regular cleaning you could have prevented having to do all of that you know medication or you know god forbid having to do you know uh you know whole vet visit just because the dog's ear got disgusting um and especially with long-haired dogs, I can't stress this enough. If you just do a little bit of brushing, a little bit of keeping up, and then not minding if the groomer says, I got to take it down to a 10, which is usually like, you know, almost to skin. Um, it's, you know, it, it's something that it, just a simple comb through while you're watching your show could have prevented. You could have gotten the haircut that you wanted to, and you would have been able to save some money just because you did a little bit of maintenance. So, you know, again, can't stress it enough. And again, a lot of the stink issues do come from ironically overbathing or uh, nutrition, which I, I really want to start getting into the specifics, but I'm guessing nutrition might have to be the next video because that is so important that I'm surprised I did grooming before that. But anyway, um, I think that's about all I can cover right now. I might do a, a point two episode if uh, I come up with more because again, I, I've just barely scraped the surface, but 
I'm, as I'm sure you can hear from uh, the clicking, clacking, and whining that my dog needs to desperately go outside, so I'm going to go do that. Have a good night.